Hi, I'm Peter Cowan with your five minute here and now news update. A Rocky Harbor man has been charged with impaired driving following a fatal crash. Police say a vehicle with four people went off the road near St. Paul's just after 11 Saturday night. A 20 year old passenger was pronounced dead at the scene. Two other passengers were treated for non life threatening injuries. The 25 year old driver wasn't hurt in the crash. He was arrested and charged with impaired driving, causing death and failure to provide a breath sample. He's due back in court in November. Well, the Prime Minister was in Cornerbrook this morning. His visit was part of his Atlantic Canadian tour over the next two days. Justin Trudeau greeted a large crowd of more than 300 people at Grenfell campus this morning for a community breakfast. He spoke briefly about Cornerbrook before he made his way through the large crowd for some selfies and some handshakes. Trudeau did meet Premier Dwight Ball earlier in the morning and talked about working with the province and its financial situation. Well, what we're working on is, uh, is uh, a broad range of issues from uh, Muskrat Falls issues to uh, uh, equalization issues. There's a, a broad interest in making sure that Canadians right across the country have all the opportunities and recognize uh, that there have been some real challenges here in Newfoundland and Labrador and the kind of leadership that Premier Ball is showing uh, and the incredible work uh, that MPs and cabinet ministers are doing to address the challenges faced by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians is uh, ongoing. The Prime Minister's first official visit to the province continued in CBS this afternoon, complete with kissing babies. There you see it. And there were also plenty of selfies at the Newfoundland and Labrador Summer Games, but no announcements. He surprised some athletes during lunch and then took in a soccer game before flying off to New Brunswick. RCMP dr divers have recovered the body of a 40-year-old man in the Caudroy Valley over the weekend. The man is presumed to have drowned. Police were called to the area on Saturday. The man's body was found in a pond near Doyle's shortly before 9 this morning. The RCMP says no further information will be released. Well, an old problem has reared its head again at Her Majesty's Penitentiary. Last month, correctional workers uh, worked 32 24-hour shifts. Back-to-back -back shifts are considered a health and safety risk to staff and inmates. Still, the practice is continuing and the Justice Department says some of the guards are to blame. The province says it's been trying to limit the number of 24-hour shifts, but says it's being stonewalled with some correctional officers actively looking for the work. But the union representing workers says it's been pushing to stop the practice. NAEP President Jerry Earl says he's willing to find a solution with government. This first came to light when I took this office last year. Uh, Nate, actually in response to a story that broke in, we expressed concerns over ongoing 24-hour shifts. There may be times for operational requirements in any facility that that may be a necessity, but it shouldn't be a normal. And we look at it from an occupational safety point of view, not just at HMP, at any facility. A theatre company in Cornerbrook is taking its audience on a spooky stroll through the downtown on a ghost walk. Actor and storyteller Jacob Bradbury points out haunted buildings and tells ghost stories near popular city landmarks. Many of the stories are based on the history of the West Coast city. The ghost walks run three times a week and it's attracting both tourists and locals. Anybody from Newfoundland knows that there's all kinds of ghost stories and I've heard stories growing up, my parents and stuff had told, but these are all new ones to me so it was really interesting that way. And uh, I must say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look and think uh, a little more closely as I go around to places now, definitely. Big news for a new restaurant in downtown St. John's, Cito Kitchen and Bar has been named to En Route Magazine's long list of the country's best new restaurants. The small eatery on Duckworth Street opened in March and has just five staff. Cito is the only restaurant from this province to make it on the list. Voting takes place online and the top 10 will be revealed in November. Now for a quick look at your weather forecast. While the weather generally looks good for Tuesday across the province, with some of us looking at sunshine in the mix, watch for a chance of scattered showers for the east, northeast and central parts of the island tomorrow, and also a good chance of showers over western Labrador. Temperatures for most of us will be back into the low to mid 20s. And that's it for me. For news anytime, we're online at cbc.ca/nl and tune into CBC Radio 1. Thanks so much for watching.